Today, I'm gonna to show you how to duplicate an object and place it in perspective. Hey guys, and welcome to Flirt. My name is Aaron Nays. You can find me on Twitter at AKNatzer. Today, we got a really cool episode. We're actually gonna be taking part of this image. We're gonna be duplicating it and then putting that back into perspective. I'm gonna show you guys how to warp or transform things into perspective to make sure that they maintain like the constant size they should be, even if they go back farther in the frame. I'm gonna show you guys some cool ways to composite it back in. So let's go ahead and get into it. We got a lot to do. So the image we're working on today, this is by Nils. He won our contest last week. And if you guys wanna have your images edited on Flurn, all you have to do is submit them in a comment every single week on our contest episode. So this is, uh, this is Nils' image and it's really, really cool. I like this, uh, it just everything about it is great. So I had the idea, basically, like, what if we wanted to take this dog and then uh, duplicate him over in the background? Well, it's not really that hard to do, so I'm going to show you guys how to, if you wanted to go around doing something like this. But there are a couple challenges that we do need to get around first. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, like, draw a lasso right around our subject here. There we go. Something just like that. And now I'm going to hit Command J. So that's going to duplicate whatever's on, on our subject right there over to a new layer. So we just drew a lasso tool and uh, we're gonna duplicate him. So the next hard part, and a lot of people struggle with this, is they wanna like place him in the background. So they'll hit like Command T and then they'll make it a little bit smaller then they'll like put him right there or whatever. And they're like, I don't know where she go. It looks too small there, maybe too big there. It's actually pretty tough to like figure out where, where this guy should go um, and have it maintain proper perspective. Like obviously he can't go there and he can't go there either because the horizon goes back to a certain place. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command T and instead of transforming around the middle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our transform point and I'm gonna put this back here on our horizon. So this is like where the horizon lines. This is like all lines will lead to, to this point eventually. Um, we'll just bring it up maybe a little bit, just something like that. So when I transform this, now it should just kind of look like it's going back to the horizon instead of just getting smaller where it is. So the key here is to hold down the Shift key as well as the Alt or Option key. So hold down shift and alter option and as it goes back, he should look like he's sitting on the ground even back, 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 back in space. So, or he can get closer if you want him to do that. He should look like he still stays in the proper perspective because he's being transformed um, by the horizon. He's, he's basically maintaining the proper perspective as we transform. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now left and right doesn't really matter just um, vertically matters and uh, where you transform matters. So we'll get him to about right there. It looks pretty good. And uh, so we can just move him to the left and the right. Notice I can't move him up or down now because he's gonna look wrong. So left and the right is fine, but not up or down. Okay, let's put him right about there. That looks pretty good. Okay, now what we're gonna do is like a relatively okay job of uh, cutting him out. So the next thing, this is our next challenge. We have to cut him out and uh, you'll notice that there's actually a decent bit of blur back there. So he can't actually be in focus like he is in the foreground. So what I'm gonna do is a relatively rough job just kind of cutting him out of, uh, of this background that we, we copied over. And for this, I'm just using a, uh, a brush tool on a layer mask, just really simple. And the reason why this is simple, it's all gonna get a blur in just a minute anyway. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense to go ahead and you know, make it much better than this. It just, it, you don't need to. So don't waste your time doing it. All right, there we go. If there was no blur, you would want to make a uh, you would want to do a better job cutting him out. There we go. That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is this is the next cool thing about this uh, tutorial is you can actually control a blur on a layer if you turn that layer first into what's called a smart object. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on here and we're going to co convert this to a smart object. So not much changes. The layer mask is gone, but you can always get back to the original image if you just by double clicking it here. It'll open it in a new document, and then you can edit the layer mask here on the new document. And when you save this, there we go. You can hit don't save. It'll automatically update on this one. So that's what's cool about a smart object. The other cool thing is smart objects support small, smart filters. So if I go to filter, blur, and over here to Gaussian blur, I can choose a blur. Let's just choose one that's a little bit lower. And we're gonna hit okay. Now a normal blur on a normal layer is just applied. Using a smart blur on a smart layer means I can now, even after the fact, turn the Gaussian blur on or off. Not only that, I can double click right here and I can actually change the blur that is on our subject. So if I, if, 
I'm trying to match the blur of our subject to the blur of the background. And if I don't get it exactly right, it's not a big deal because I can just double click here and uh, I can change it after the fact. So let's go in here. I'm going to put another layer mask on here and now we're just going to clean it up a little bit more. There we go, something like that. It looks pretty good. Maybe he's a little bit too blurred. So let's just pull that back down and hit OK. Now he's also affected a little bit more by atmosphere, right? You can see it just kind of goes into fog in the background. So what we're going to do is create a new layer and I'm going to hit Option Command G or right click on this to make it a clipping mask. So create clipping mask. And what that's going to do is it's just going to allow me to paint uh, and only have it affect the dog. So we're going to create this new layer, paint it about 10% flow, and I'm going to grab some of this white color and kind of paint over. There we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit lower. This is some of the fog that's going to be coming over here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the ground because it shouldn't be as dark as well. So we're going to paint some of this ground color on there. Again, just with the brush tool. I'm going to change this from normal down here to lighten. There we go. So it doesn't darken anything. And we'll just lower the opacity of that a little bit too. So we're already pretty close. Um, it's basically up to here. It was like, you know, how how much or how little blur you want it to be. Um, let's go ahead and just shift click those three layers. I'm going to hit Command G to group them. Now we can still have this go left and right and technically it should still be correct uh, no matter where we put it uh, as long as we're going left and right. It's a little bit too much of a blur still so let's go double click right over here and we can just lower this down to like 3.7 something like that. All right maybe a little bit more. So it's really nice to use that smart object with a smart blur on there because you can always just change that after the fact. You don't have to go in and like do all of the steps over and over again. You can just change the blur. All right. And that looks pretty good. I think we're going to move him a little off to the left there just for like composition reasons. And uh, if you wanted a little bit more, um, if you want a little bit more fog or something like that, just grab a brush tool, create a new clipping layer and uh, paint the fog right over, over top of your dog. There we go. Cool. That's a, that's a lot of fog right there. That's it's a great example of fog. Um, and then just lower your opacity until it actually works for you. So something pretty low should wind up getting it right there. Yeah, and that's pretty much it, guys. So we were able to transform it using the perspective. We were able to bring some of the fog back over it. And we were able to do that really cool smart object, smart Gaussian blur on there, which allowed us to change that over time. So it's a relatively simple concept. And uh, well, but not as simple when you execute it, but now you guys know how it's going to be a lot easier. So this is something like content aware move and things like that. Um, they, they will not be able to do like this. So if you want to be able to do something like this, you have to learn how to do it manually in Photoshop because there quite simply is no better way. So, but it's not that hard because I just did it just now. So you guys can do it too. Thank you so much for watching to learn. I hope this helped out. You guys can do this a ton. If you have like uh, balloons or people or trees or something like that and you want to duplicate them all over your image, use this exact same technique. It's going to work for you every single time. Thanks so much, and I will flurn you later. Bye, guys. For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below, and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you, as well as professional photographers, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.